Okay, so I already own a few tents. My uh, favourite ones are probably the uh, the Van Gogh Soul 100, which I don't even know if you can buy those anymore, at least not new. I think they've changed them up with something else. It's a great little solo tent. Love that thing. It just fits really easy in the pack. A uh, larger one, when I have other people around, is my Van Gogh Banshee 300. Love that thing as well. Like Quite easy to put up. Very spacious. Uh, I have a couple of other tents. I have an old uh, British military one, which, uh, although warm and robust, is very, very heavy to carry. And uh, to be honest, I don't even count the other one because it's like a cheap, cheap ass basic dome tent, which has next to no um, waterproof features with it. It's just, uh, it would get soaked if you had that in a torrent. <clears throat> now, the uh, issue with my two favourite tents, the, uh, the Banshee and the Shoal, and the Soul, sorry is that they're both tunnel tents, which I'm sure if you know about camping and, well, tents in general, they're quite lightweight, they're kind of good for backpacking, they do kind of have a weakness in that they really do have to be pegged in, like, quite tough. Uh, they've got, like, no support in the middle because the, the main supports are, like, at the front and at the back, but then the middle is all the fabric, so it has to be sort of stretched out, so they're not terribly stable when it comes to things like uh, wind. And I imagine like heavy heavy snow and uh, heavy rain could also prove a bit of an issue on them. So I've been looking around for a little tent for a while. Uh, one of the ones I did see, which a um, little bit more than some of the other tents I bought, but still not terribly expensive, was the uh, Berghaus Cheviot 2. Or the 3. This is a, a semi... I can't talk today. A semi-geodesic tent, so it's got the crisscrossing poles, quite stable. Usually range somewhere along the lines of about 140 to 170 pound. I've seen them, including uh, including a couple of the outdoor places which uh, I can get to. Uh, in fact, uh, one of them in particular had one out in the display, the ex the outdoor display area. They had like a permanent uh, one there, so you could see what it was like. And honestly, uh, both me and my partner looked at it, and it looked like really good. It looked very stable compared to the other ones at least. And, you know, two-person tent, they're not always the roomiest, but it seemed like I had enough room in, especially for the porch area, so that's one I was wanting for a little while. And, um, I now have that exact one, and when I say that exact one, I don't just mean the, uh, the Shivia 2, I mean that exact tent. This is the X-Display model. Uh, original price 220 To be honest, it hasn't been that in a long, long time. I think they have been generally retailing for around 170 But still, 55 that is still less than half of what they usually are. Now, this X display, and as I said, the X display area, it was outside. And they did seem to just keep them up for extended periods of time. I don't know if they really ever took them down that much, so... It has been set up in an outside area for a while, so it's been exposed to all the elements, you know, sun, wind, rain, whatever. So it's not going to be in prime condition, most likely. Uh, at the very least, I'm probably going to have to re-proof it, like do some waterproofing on the fly sheet and probably the ground, so the ground sheet area as well. Yeah, fifty-five pound. I was willing to take the risk for that, considering uh, how much they usually are. And it is the exact tent I was wanting, and probably because it's a, uh, it's got good waterproofness, well, decent waterproofness, especially if I reproof it as well, and it's fairly light. So I haven't actually explored this properly. Uh, had a good look at it since I picked it up last week. So let's open it up here. I've made some. Uh, Space in the living room. There's usually a coffee table and the the footstool and everything down there. So Yeah, let's see if I can let's see if I can fit this here Now look I've got an audience. Hello Smithy <laughs> It's still got a warning sticker on from when it was set out on display but, uh, Yeah, that's it deflated um, It seems to have the uh, right amount of pegs in there, which is cool and I'm hoping everything else is in here. I'm guessing this is the uh, the poles. We've also got the fly sheet and the inner tent itself attached already, which is nice because one thing about getting a new tent is having to attach those things, especially if it's the kind that do attach inside. Like uh, with my banshee, and I'm assuming with this as well by the looks of it, you can sort of set them up 
so they're already attached inside you just got to hook them all in and then put them away like that so that's not too bad so yeah it is very squeezed in it uh, turns out the space I made is good lengthwise uh, width wise it is very pressed into the sides there I had a quick look, I can't notice any tears or anything, which is good. Um, very obvious sun bleaching here, I'm wondering if maybe the price was there. And you can see just under the zips as well how the reds are much richer. Uh, hopefully some treatments uh, will help with that. I've got uh, spray stuff, uh, I could also buy like the liquid stuff to paint on it. So hopefully that will help and the sun damage won't be too much of an issue. Uh, hopefully the waterproofing will keep it done, but of course I did buy it like a massive discount. Not that you can see it terribly well now I'm having to stand on the sofa, but that's it lengthwise, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. And I said it's it's light. It's it's about the same weight as my um three person banshee. But actually I say it's a bit less so even more of a plus, it's uh, probably only slightly more than my uh, Soul 100. Well, uh, yeah, we'll wait, we've got some time on a nice dry day, then we'll, we'll start treating the outside of this and do the, uh, the inner sheet as well. Probably we'll take a fly sheet uh, just in case it's not as waterproof as I'm hoping, though the reviews I've seen online are pretty good for the tent in, on the whole. We'll see about that, but... Yeah, let's, uh, let's get this thing put down. Well, it is March the 27th, so it's been a little while since I picked up the tent and put it out inside the living room for some obscene reason. But anyway, I figured since we've had uh, quite a good steady streak of like nice dry warm weather, it was about time I actually did this, so... Managed to uh, put up the tents right, right out in the open. Uh, for some reason, it was a bit harder to do in the open than it was indoors. Don't know why, maybe I just got myself slightly mixed up, but... And I got up eventually some nice, good, strong aluminium poles. And uh, just checked the instructions on the spray I had. And uh, apparently you can use it on dry or wet canvas. I wasn't going to wet the canvas because it didn't, I didn't think it needed a particular strong clean, but then when I did look, it looked like there had uh, been traces of a mess where birds have been at some point, so I did wipe that down a little bit, though couldn't seem to get rid of the stains, but oh well. So wiped it down a bit briefly, and then I just kind of went section by section spraying this stuff on. It's uh, water-based, so it was quite runny. Uh, and yeah, pretty much had the consistency of water, uh, but you know, follow the instructions, uh, sprayed it on sections, made sure I got most, if not all the areas, then you know, let it stay there for a few minutes. Uh, I went back to wipe off the access, but uh, just to be curious, I did kind of just use a sponge just to make sure I really rubbed it in uh, like every nook and cranny I could. You know, then let it dry a little bit longer and just put it out. Honestly, I probably used over half the container on this tent alone, so I don't know if maybe I was a bit excessive, but you know, I just wanted to be safe. Uh, after that dried, of course, uh, I just had a quick look around, got a good inspection, wiped it down a bit more just to rub off some of the excess, and then I decided to tip it over on its side so I could actually get the bottom. Now, the bottom shouldn't be too much as a concern as the outside is, because obviously it's a lot less exposed to the light. Though it was still out in the open for an extended period of time on like the showroom floor. So I figured I would like give that a quick spray just to... Just as well, just to like rub that in and so I left it on the site to dry. Uh, by that point I had like a very little spray left in the container and I thought, well, do you know what, it was a nice day. May as well take out the Van Gogh Soul, my old reliable, uh, which I haven't used in a while, but uh, I still intend to keep using, so I brought that one out. Uh, this has never had a treatment in the amount of times I've had it, despite the fact it's probably my most used tent. Well, at least for little solo trips like mine. Uh, you might notice uh, there's a little bit of a point 
at the top of it there. That's not supposed to be there. The temples themselves have broken. So, um, they're kind of being held together with duct tape, but I do need to get some tents. I have found a seller online though who does have some replacement poles. Uh, the ones for the sole are fiberglass as opposed to the uh, aluminium or aluminum, depending where you're from, that the uh, larger Berghaus Shivia 2 has. And uh, in fact, some of the larger Van Goghs as well, like I have a, a Van Gogh Banshee 300 that has like metallic poles as well, which are much better. But you know what? I love this little sole. It's um, it's just very light. It is very simple to like assemble and put up. Honestly, if you're traveling somewhere, especially somewhere like wooded, where you can really get the pegs in and you're not expecting extreme weather, I think it's a really good starter tent and or just a backpacking tent for those kind of environments. It is a tunnel tent though, so as I said, uh, just hopefully the weather isn't going to be a bit too extreme because uh, unlike the Shivia 2 setup right beside it, um, it's not as stable in comparison since it doesn't have like poles running through the center, it's just got the, the two rings and it's essentially being held together when you peg it into the ground. But uh, yeah, I had like very little spray left, so I used what was left of it just on the outside of the sole as well. Uh, didn't even have enough to cover the whole thing, to be honest, but now yeah, I thought, why not? So yeah, kind of constructive day, like I've had some treatment to the Berg house and you know, also the little Van Gogh sole while I was at it. I guess what's left now is just to actually test it out in the wild and... Not sure when that's going to be, um, we are getting into spring and summer now, so yeah, hopefully I'll be able to like, go pretty soon and test it out. Of course the, uh, the Berghaus Shivia 2 is uh, supposed to be a bit more of a sturdy tent, so it doesn't necessarily have to be great conditions to test it out, but obviously if, it's a, uh, if I'm just going to see what it's like, you know, maybe get it a bit more comfortable, but yeah, whatever, we'll see. So. Yep, Renji got it treated today, and it's all packed up now again. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how it holds up in the future. But uh, that was that was the end of this uh, little selection of uh, tent videos. So we'll uh, we'll see how it does in the wild. But uh, for now, goodbye.